Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of my Cedar Point Recreation Park. To absolutely nobody's surprise, we are back working on some more non-ride buildings today. And today we're tackling the final major area inside the park, the Millennia Midway. Pretty much everything that spans the distance between the Skyride entrance all the way back to Frontier Trail. Way back when we were originally doing our park layout and coaster designs, I speculated this was going to be one of the most complicated parts of the park to build, simply because most of it is kind of diagonally oriented. And hey, guess what? I was right. While I won't say all of the buildings here were very complicated to build individually, it was definitely a challenge to get the placement and layout of all these buildings in a way that made sense for the park. Definitely made a lot of concessions in order to get everything done in a way that made a little bit of sense. Starting here with the coasters drive-in, a little restaurant with counter service food. That one was pretty easy to get. But then as soon as we pass that, we're seeing some issues with lots of diagonals. One thing that's making it complicated as well is the monorail track I've been using for flower bed boundaries. Way back when we did Val Raven, I threw down some monorail track as part of the outline for this path because I thought it would make it look pretty nice and I do like the curvy shape that it makes but since track is in the middle of the tile instead of on the edge it doesn't make it particularly easy to get path boundaries that work with it very well so I think I'm going to wind up nuking a lot more of it in favor of the regular track architecture fences it's going to be more work to put in but I think the end result is going to look a little bit better next on the list is trying to figure out how to do the second station for the railroad this one is an absolute nightmare. If you look at an aerial view of the railroad, it is like perfectly diagonal in relation to the midway. So you either have to turn it so that it faces the Iron Dragon area, in which case you lose like half of the station building, or you turn it so it faces the street, in which case it doesn't face any of the park, but you still have a bit more room for the waiting areas. And neither of those things seem like particularly good options. In the end, I opted for a build where the station is facing the midway and the waiting area is just going to be a little bit shorter than it is in real life. And it kind of cuts a little bit awkwardly over top of the railroad. Really not the ideal layout, unfortunately. But I think if I wanted to have a path layout that made the most sense and helped peeps get less lost, this is probably the best way to go. So far, it seems to work out, although the line is always packed. So I'm wondering if I need to move it a little farther over still just to make sure there's enough room for everyone to wait in line. I really hate tearing it down and rebuilding it over and over again, but that might be something I will think about and tweak off camera a little bit. Other than that, the buildings themselves on this midway, as I mentioned earlier, don't give us a lot of problems each individually. It's just trying to figure out where the best place to put them all is. For example, there is a restroom building that's kind of tucked away in the corner back behind the railroad station. And I had to move mine a little bit in order to get it to fit in the layout. It's a little bit closer to the midway here, which I think is good because that way peeps are more likely to find it. And it's already proven to be pretty popular. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about each of these other shops and stalls individually. It's kind of just more of the same thing that we've been seeing for the last five episodes or so. Although I will say, speaking of diagonals, the event stage, whose name escapes me at the moment, actually does work really well on a diagonal orientation because we can have these little river raft stairs that go off the sides. And I think the shape worked out pretty well. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't line up correctly with the projector booth thing, that little control area on the other side of the midway. So we're gonna have to pretend that those things line up in my build, but you know what, that's gonna be good enough. This area does look a little bit awkward with some of the way that the tarmac is laid out. I left a lot of it inaccessible to peeps, simply because it was getting to be a bit too much of a big block of path and I wanted to prevent people from getting lost. So at some point we're gonna to have to proxy out some more of that to make it look a little bit better, prevent people from getting lost there. Not a huge deal. There's also a pretty cool little train yard back here, a small warehouse slash maintenance building for the railroad. Kind of off topic again for this stage. It's a little bit outside the park as far as what I want to get done around here. But it's like building out this area and just kind of helping shape where the park ends compared to the street next to it. Another opportunity for some cute little train decorations here too. Finally, it's time to get the area in front of Millennium Forest itself cleaned up. We've had some real awkward path over here for quite a while because it's so crowded and people are getting lost. And it's time to add a couple little games over here and clean up the path, get everything all connected together. 
They're just some little midway games here with a little rope ladder climb and a basketball game. And one of those guess your weight booths. I do like that since I used track architecture for the basketball and ladder games that peeps will stop and look at them. Kind of looks like they are trying to make some shots, I suppose. The placement of these is again a little bit awkward since they're facing kind of a weird direction. They're not facing the midway directly. I don't know if there's a better way at all to do this. We could use diagonal track here, but making the structures for it is not going to look right. So I'm going to live with this for now, and maybe I'll come up with something better in the future, but I'm probably not going to spend too much time worrying about it. Also in this area, you can see that I deleted some more tarmac and created some flower beds in here. I don't think there's a lot of flower beds in here in real life compared to what I threw down, but as I've mentioned before, hopefully it's going to prevent some weird pathfinding issues and just having lots of boring path. Just something that will look a little bit more interesting, I suppose. I did also put down a bunch of the diagonal fences and proxy path and everything that would go in here. I was supposed to save this for next phase, but I did want to see how it would work with the shape of the path here. Just to make sure that everything you know looked nice and clean-ish. And it made sense with everything in this layout. I think once we throw enough trees in here to cover up some of the weird corner base blocks and things like that, will definitely help make things look a little bit nicer. Not sure I'm going to keep all of this black railing fence. Some of it looks a little bit awkward, but also just looks weird to have path that isn't fenced off. I've done a lot of different fencing techniques throughout the park here, and there's definitely some that work better than others, but I want to keep trying different things to see what works best, and I can use the ones I like best around the rest of the park. Just have to make sure I don't screw anything up because if you mess up the proxy path, it can be a real pain to fix. As I keep saying, a lot of tedious work going in here to make these paths look decent. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. I think we've only got one episode left of doing the inside the park buildings, and that's for some employee stuff over by the Lakeside Midway. And then we'll be able to move on to something different. But in the meantime, if you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.